and welcome to our midweek podcast. Um, it's good to be able to catch up with you all in this way. Um, I've caught up with some of you on the phone and some of us ha- have. And I know a lot of you are going through all kinds of challenges at the moment. Uh, I mentioned in the email at the weekend that Jackie has not been too well. Um, but we're just monitoring it day by day to see what it is. Uh, she's kind of relaxing and resting at the moment. Um, and uh, so continue to pray for us. We continue to pray for you. We know there's a number in the church at the moment who are not very well, but we uh, hold each other up in prayer, believing that this strange time we find ourselves in will um, pass through very quickly. Um, I've got something I want to encourage you with uh, just for your midweek uh, devotions here. That's the purpose of the midweek connect. And uh, I just want to encourage you beyond what you could expect. Uh, God's given me something today which I really want to drop onto you like just a a real dose of springtime from heaven and when God speaks to you with a now word um, it's great it's fantastic and it's always just what you need it's always full of hope and 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 just full of 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 great stuff from heaven Um, so I want us to pray and I'll share a few words from 1 Samuel Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We pray in the name of Jesus for everyone listening to this podcast, uh, Lord, that you will just fill them with your spirit, that you will excite them and that you'll give them a vision and fill them with hope. We ask that in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to read now from uh, 1 Samuel 3 verses 1 to 10, uh, something you may be familiar with. And then we'll just look at it and and see what God wants to say to us and to you specifically through this today. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you call me. See, sometimes God calls us, but we interpret it as something else. Maybe we're looking for God in in, in the wrong place. But Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you call me. My son Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, here I am, you call me. Do you know what? Here I am, Lord, you call me is the one thing that I also want to do every day. I want to get up in the morning and say, God, what are you saying to me? And uh, I trust that that will be something on your heart as well. Then Eli realized the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Of course, this happened towards the end of the period of Judges in the Old Testament, where the the Israelites, God's people, had moved into the promised land, but God had not yet want, wanted them to have a king. And of course, a king, King Saul, came later on. But here was Samuel. Samuel was um, considered like a sort of a judge, an overseer. Uh, but on, on this occasion, he was just a little boy and uh, had not yet discovered God. But my goodness, he discovered God in uh, an incredible way. There was not an awful lot going on with God's people. But God came in and jumped in with some incredible uh, springtime. Why did God speak to a little boy? Well, he had a he had a calling on his life, but you know sometimes when God calls us, those of us who are grown up, maybe I mean maybe for me, I don't know if you can apply this to yourself, but I I think sometimes maybe God tries to speak to me and I don't hear him because I just think I'm full of myself. You know, I've had this experience with God, that experience with God. I know this and I know that, and I'm. I'm kind of above that now. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a this or I'm a that. But I think that if we have the attitude that Samuel had, that we can hear God all the time, and it'll be just what 
he wants us to hear, just what we need to hear. And it will be springtime, a spiritual springtime. Luke 18, 17 says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And we need to have that childlike attitude to listening to what God has said every single time. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Three questions I want to ask you today, very simply. And when I ask you this question, kind of forget everything you know about the scripture that you may have learned for years. You may, have, you may be a preacher yourself and you, you might have preached on it, but just just listen to what I've got to say afresh. And I pray that now anyone listening to this will be open to what your spirit has to say afresh today. That they won't compare this sermon to somebody else who's preached it, but they'll be open. The first question I want to ask you is, has God spoken to you? Has God spoken to you? Have you ever had a period of time where God has spoken to you? That's incredible, isn't it? You see, God speaks through his word, quite simply. I mean, you know, so a lot of the things that God says to us is obvious. For instance, John three sixteen: For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John fourteen six: I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Um, Acts sixteen thirty one. They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved, you and your household. Yes, God has spoken to us, to the church, to mankind in some obvious ways. And he goes on, you know, Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. You love your neighbor as yourself. We know that God is speaking to us in general. But has he spoken to you specifically? Has he said something to you? through a prophet in the church because God does speak through, through prophecy a predictive prophecy God still speaks in that way has God spoken to you specifically because if he hasn't my encouragement to you during this time of quarantine that we're all in and, and being tossed around by every every news story and every goodness knows what gets close to God and allow God to speak to you. So that's the first question I want to say to you. Has God spoken to you? You see, God might have spoken to Eli. God might have spoken to others. But maybe they weren't listening. Maybe they just thought, I'm too good for all this. I'm just too good for all this. You know, I went on a, I went on a trip to the Philippines many times with some colleagues in, in, in a church in, in, in Guernsey. And I came, to, I came then to Romsey. And for ages, I was speaking about the Philippines until one day I felt, it was like, almost like God said to me in my heart, shut up about the Philippines. That's what we did then. Let me do a new thing in you right now. And God is always doing a new thing in us. What happened in the Philippines was great, but God wants to do a new thing in my heart. Whether he wants to send me back there again or send me to Swaziland or somewhere else or whatever. I, I believe God wants to call me to visit Swaziland like some of my colleagues in my, in, in my church. But God wants to give me new stuff, new experiences. He wants to speak to me in new ways. So has God spoken to you? The second thing I want to say to you uh, is this. Um, what did God say to you? When, when God spoke to you, what did he say to you? Do you know that? Do you, and, and God can speak for a variety of ways. He can speak supernaturally or in your heart or in a still small voice or through the word of God or a worship song. What did God say to you? Not to the church or to me or to the Elim movement or the church in this country. Those things are important, but, but to you. What did God say to you about you? What did he say? Did he challenge you? Did he encourage you? Did he tell you something about something that was going on, will be going on in the future? I don't know. But what did God say to you? Many, many years ago, we, um, uh, before we came to our ministry in Romsey, uh, we felt that God spoke to us through a series of um, connected events that it was right for us to move to the mainland and minister in Romsey. And God confirmed it in some quite supernatural ways. And it was incredible. And once we felt that and, and, and really prayed and heard God through that, it was just like springtime. God was saying something new, something great. And I would encourage you to find out, has God spoken to you 
And what did he say? And the final question is simply this. What are you going to do about it? Because if God has spoken to you and God says something specifically to you, you then have to do something about it. Because you see, if Samuel had ignored what God had said, you'd never heard about Samuel. He would never be, become this amazing overseer that, that was kind of the figurehead and the background through a lot of Israel's struggles. He could have said, oh, that was just, maybe it was Eli, maybe it was something else. Oh, I'm not into, into God, I'm just a boy. But, but if God has spoken to you, what are you going to do about it? Ask God for strength to do something about it. Many, many years ago, um, I was on a kind of a church mission, a few, a few of me and my, my colleagues and friends and a few pastors from the island of Guernsey in the Channel Islands in the English Channel. Um, we went across to Jersey and we, we, we had this a lot of street evangelism and missions and things like that. And um, I just knew that God wanted me to work full time in the Christian ministry. I saw other people doing that and I thought, that is what I've got to do. If my life ends one day and I've not done that and I've missed out, that is the thing for me. And God was speaking to me about that. And uh, I just knew inside that that was what it was. And it took me a long time to get there. But maybe God has spoken to you years ago about something. Or maybe God is speaking to you afresh. I'll tell you one thing. He's not going to put you on the shelf. I don't care how young or old you are. Or you might be to this or to that. God might have some new daffodils, some new springtime, some new, some new calling for you, something different. Or God might want to say something to you. God might want to use you even in the confines of your own home or in the restrictions that you have. So three questions. Sorry, three questions. Has God spoken to you? What did he say? And what are you going to do about it? God says lots of stuff to us. You see, God speaks to you personally. And his will for you is good and it's full of hope and it's full of answers and it's full of vitality and vigour. And if you step into God's will for you, God will move in all kinds of ways. But I was, I was listening to a, a lady called Heidi Baker on Christian TV the other night and she preached for half an hour about the importance of just, she said, forget everything that's going on. Just live for Jesus every day. Fall in love with Jesus. Find out what his will is for you. Shout his fame. Worship him. Trust him. Listen to him. Learn more about him. And you will just learn something so new. You experience something so new. Right here and right now. Even though your job might be <coughs> facing difficulties or any other aspect of your life because of this awful thing that's happening around the world. Fall in love with Jesus again. Listen to what he's got to say. You see, Jeremiah 31 verse 3 um, says this, where God is speaking to us and to him in this, the Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. God also says to us as Christians, reminds us, Romans 8 verses 1 and 2, therefore there is now no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. You know, earlier, I was helping Ashley with her homework and she reached out to me and said, I was just doing something else. She was on the table and she turned around and said, Dad, I said, what? She said, can you help me? Maybe you could reach out to God today and say, Dad, can you help me? Maybe you're watching this, you've come across it and, and, and you're thinking, well, what about this Christian stuff then? I want to say to you quite simply, Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay the price for every sin that's ever been committed and everything you've ever done wrong. Why don't you, in this time of, 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 of this strange season in the world, reach out to Jesus? He died for you. Ask him to be your Lord and Saviour and allow him then to slowly start to piece together your life, to bring in some spring daffodils. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are or whatever else is going on in your life. Let me pray for you. Uh, continue to pray for Jackie. We'll continue to pray for you. And it's our hope to try and do some kind of live communion or something on Sunday. We're not quite sure what yet. Um, we tried it at the weekend and it, 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 looked, it, looked, it didn't go too well uh, because of the actual setup. So we'll still do the Sunday broadcast on YouTube, but the actual live one, we're still working on it. But we continue to pray for you. And we're going to try and, and sort of FaceTime some of you and, and get round and, and, um, and literally 
um, connect with all of you um, in, in so many different ways. And we're, we're here for you. Um, and Lord, I pray for your blessing on every person watching this right now and give them a good day. And I pray, Lord, for every person here. They may be the most incredible Bible teacher in history. They may have started 10,000 churches. But I pray they put all that aside and say, Lord, something new. Luke 18, 17, accept the, accept the kingdom of God like a child again and afresh and believe that you will send something new in and that you'll banish worry, you'll bring in hope and you'll bring in a future. Lord, because these are things that you are good at. God bless you and thank you for watching today. Thank you.